1964, Phil Knight, track runner at the University of Oregon, came up with an idea to create a more performant running shoe because he was judging all the shoes too flat, not resistant enough. So the runner Phil Knight and his coach, but also co-founder of the future brand, Bill Bomberman, decided to create a more performant shoe under the name of Blue Ribbon Sports. So why Blue Ribbon Sports? Blue Ribbon was their favorite beer brand at the time, and they added the word sport because it will be the purpose of the shoe for practicing sport. To create the shoe, Bowman and I invested $500 each, and in 1971, they changed the name to Nike, and the coach and track runner paid around $35 to Keller and Davidson to design the future brand logo, the Swoosh. Nike Swoosh represents a runner running away on a running track, and the name Nike comes from the Greek goddess Nike. Bowerman and I made a partnership with Otnisuka Tiger, the Japanese brand, and their first running shoe called Cortez was created and first appeared at the Olympics of 1972, worn by the athlete Steven Premfontien. In 1984, Nike signed a contract with the basketball player Michael Jordan with the creation of the Air Jordan 1. Nike increased their notary. Then in 1987, Nike released their first Air Max, which has a waffle and air cushioning so apparent from the outside of the shoe, designed and patterned by the employee Frank Rudy. The shoes were imagined by the library George Pomidou in Paris, where the inside of the library can be seen from the outside. Nike Inc., the main company, owns now four brands, including Nike, Converse, Hurley, and Air Jordan. The brand Jordan sells basketball gears from apparel and shoes to accessories for professional and more fashionable customers. And the brand Hurley sells swimwear apparel and accessories for surfers. While Converse is a brand that was created in 1908 but now owned by Nike, Converse today is more seen as a casual and retro brand. And finally, Nike Inc. has four sub-brands within the Nike brand. These are Nike Plus, where the company invites customers to join the Nike community in running or training clubs. Nike SB which is mostly used for skateboard users, but also for customers looking for a relaxed look. Nike Golf, which provides golf gears for golf players. And Nike Pro, for those who want to train in lighter and more flexible fabrics. Nike also processes five product categories, responding to different customers, such as training, running, football, basketball, or regular sportwear. So let's be a little bit academic now because well, we have to. So here you see the brand identity prism of Nike based on Capra's model. So the prism shows how the brand uh, would organize its identity. Thus, its personality would aim to be sportive, trendy, athletic and experienced. Its culture would of course be American, but this with history transmitting and specific lifestyle of of sports and fitness, transmitting this image to the customers would picture themselves when wearing Nike as athletics with healthy lifestyle, brand conscious and as a result with higher distinct stages. Table Perfect, that's what Jolton has brought its spirit, being cool and up to date wearing innovative sports clothes. We thought Nike would create a trustworthy and motivational relationship with its customers that would reinforce their physique that is just it. Nike has always aimed to provide high quality sportswear to active people, having a high variety of sportswear, innovating on quality to excel, and making con constant improvement of their materials and design for better performance. But let's see what people actually think about Nike. I think Nike is really cool and they're I think they're really good at what they're doing and I think they've they're kind of a trendsetter in a way for um, sports brands because they made the whole like sports wear and athletic wear kind of more stylish. So I think they're kind of a trendsetter in that way. I think Nike is an outstanding brand and also I think it's too colorful as well as a uh, um, yeah, it's brown, and I think the shape of the shoes are always different, so it's really quite good, uh, too sportive. I think Nike is a very diverse brand, and I think 
it's almost becoming like a lifestyle brand. So I think everyone owns something that's Nike. It's part of like their lifestyle. So I think in that sense, they're making their way like in the household. I think Nike is good in that sense. I think that Nike is very uh, active and also very popular. And maybe you'll say no at you. Let's say Nike is a person. This person would have four important components to their personality that Nike renaissance within their brand. So you, Nike, how would you describe your personality? Um, I would say I'm really spirited, athletic, and a good person. I need to know, Nike, are you reliable? Yes, I'm very trustworthy. <laughs> One funny question, Nike. How does your brain work? Perfectly fine. I try to be innovating every day. So Nike, I have one important question. Are you a leader? Yes, always. Well, there you go. If you're looking for excitement, ruggedness, and competence, that's Nike. Four important components of the Nike brand personality. Consumer fashionable attitudes and behaviors have changed and developed these past years. We all have experienced the change of this of these styles and clothing trends. Our everyday outfits have changed from this to this. So as we can see, the clear division that once existed before performance and fashionable clothing have become clear today. This new trend has paved the path to sportswear brand and designers that target a much greater market these days. Not just sported people, but people that wear their designs every day. You can see that now, when choosing our outfits, we don't only think about what we as better, but what will translate the image that we want to show and how we want to be seen. Behind our style choices, there is much more than a pretty outfit, but the desire to transmit what we are or what we aim to be. Nike represents different range of products within sportwear and lifestyle wear. Nike is one of the first brands to incorporate high-tech technology to their product, which has led them to earn the leading position in the sport and lifestyle footwear market. But what makes Nike the top sport brand in the market? Nike is the first brand to use technology to produce shoes. Nike has been prominent with just not creating shoes for just wearing shoes, but also creating shoes with a purpose by using technology to create as much comfort and flexibility as possible. The leading shoe style Nike Air Max is one of the most technical Nike shoe. By allowing people to personalize their own sneakers, Nike is being personal and relatable. How much better can it get? This position in MAP, it can be seen where each brand is placed in terms of price and functionality. Nike and Adidas have higher prices and are considered more fashionable brands. While Reebok and Puma usually have lower price and are seen as a more functionable product than fashionable. Nike and Adidas rule the market share. There is strong usage and higher perception of differentiation placed them high above other sports brands. However, Vivo Camp Puma's usage is strong but not, not at the same extent as mass appeal. Their image is more accessible and reliable but without the desirability or vibrancy of the two biggest brands. Therefore, Adidas and Puma are the main competitors of Nike, since they are the sportswear's brand more used. However, Reebok is considered a big competitor, although it was acquired in 2005 by Adidas. Regarding the points of parity, Nike and Adidas are known by their innovation, authenticity, durability, resonance, quality and desirability, as well as for the use of the sports endorsements. Adidas' points of difference are confidence and a stronger global brand present than Nike, especially in Asia, Pacific and Western Europe. On the other hand, Nine points of difference are instrumentation behind technology and that consumers perceive that it's more worth paying for its products. Currently, Nike is targeting three segments and all of them include men and women between 16 and 35 year olds. The athlete. These segments include people who practice sport professionally and have an active and a sporty lifestyle. They have high expectations due to their career and are looking for specific quality products to achieve the performance goals. 
the casual. These segments consist of women movement, but women are gaining more importance for Nike within the segments. They buy sports clothing or footwear to practice sports casually and not in a professional way. They characterize on having a healthy lifestyle and looking for functional sportwear. The fashionable. These group of people are passionate about fashion. They keep themselves up to date with the latest tendencies as wearing sports clothes has become a trend. They wear them for everyday clothing rather than practicing sport activities. From a global perspective, Nike brands first among consumers' favorite clothes brands. This could be attributed to the brand's effort to understand consumers' lifestyle and habits in each country and each cultural context. According to its findings, Nike developed adaptive products and marketing strategies that match consumers' current tastes, values, and interests. Between the late 1980s and the mid-90s, Nike advertising campaigns changed dramatically. Indeed, Nike shifted from self-aware attitude about its position as a powerful company to an authentic and motivational approach. Thanks to this, Nike gradually built the discourse that made the brand a leader among all generations of consumers in many countries. However, Nike faced some controversial episodes and public scandals about the brand's production methods, judged as unethical and harmful for the environment. Thus, this issue could remain in the mind of many people harming Nike's brand image. Today, Just Do It is commonly accepted as a personal philosophy of life, but also of personal transcendence and achievement. It encourages consumers to achieve goals that are motivated by the self. All the Nike messages and marketing actions are consistent with their message, just do it. Indeed, the brand focuses on empowering consumers and building consumers' loyalty through authentic, motivational, and heroism storytelling. For example, Nike empowers women as well as people from different cultures and religions to practice sport. Nike enables consumers to express themselves through their choice of clothes, but also by integrating them in its marketing actions. The brand does not merely sell clothes or shoes, it provides its consumers with unique products, personalized experiences and online services that engage consumers outside but also inside. For instance, several years ago, Nike launched a new program called the Nike Plus Run Club. The principle is simple and it consists of weekly runs for amateurs or experienced runners. It also offers them the opportunity to benefit from personal advice from personal sports experts and coaches, in addition to the digital training applications. With clear and motivational message, come run with us. Nike's program invites occasional and regular runners to become members of the brand community. Moreover, by developing this kind of program, the brand increases its opportunities to engage young, active, and connected consumers but also to connect with themselves as life partners. According to Nike's Vice President of Marketing North America, experiential marketing tailored to consumer is better than traditional advertising. Nike has achieved a strong brand equity. The identities that they transmit and image that consumers have created are almost equal. What has led the brand to be one of the most powerful sports brands of the world? As previously mentioned, it could be summarized that Nike has a positive impact on all of its different value categories. High level of brand awareness has been attained. Strong brand association, perceived quality by consumers, which leads to brand loyalty. Over the past decades, controversial episodes about the brand's production methods were found as unethical and harmful for the environment. This impacted the brand's image in many countries, creating different consumers' movements known as anti-Nike. To face this issue and heal their reputation, Nike developed different programs. Supporting its workers, children, world communities, but also adopting new pro-environment policies that go along with the brand's engagement towards a more sustainable, low-carbon growth economy. Nike could strengthen its engagement in environment protection by investing in new initiatives. Nike could support one major organization that fight against climate change 
by conducting research in the unexplored regions of the world, such as the Arctic, where living condition requires adapt and resistant equipment for scientists. For example, Nike could design a new product that would enable scientists to work in extreme situations. This product could be a jacket made of natural fabric that would preserve researchers from extreme cold temperatures. This product will be introduced in stores after the first expedition and its media exposure. Moreover, an amount of the total profit of sales could be given to support research in the area of climate change. By helping for climate change, Nike will strengthen its engagement for a good cause, improve overall brand image, but also enable consumers to have access to responsible, innovative, and performant products. Many international organizations and charities are planning expeditions. These are the ones that we suggest as their goals and values correspond to Nike. Earthwatch is an international environmental charity that aims to support people worldwide in scientific field research and education to promote the understanding and action necessary for sustainable environment. For example, the scientists of Earthwatch expect to observe the greatest effects of global warming in the Arctic. The second one we suggest is the British Antarctic Survey. The British Antarctic Survey is an international leader in Antarctic science that is relevant to global problems. They deliver science that is excellent, exciting, and innovative. They also provide world-leading research infrastructure that enables scientists from the UK and colleagues from many nations to work safely and effectively in the polar regions. So this is our analysis of Nike's brand. We've gone through its history and architecture, its identity and image, and how everything leads to its strong brand equity. We have also spoken about one of the most controversial problems that the brand has faced and proposed a potential solution to erase that bad image held in the mind of many consumers. So, we only need to add one more thing. Just do it!